Women of Oakwood. Whether you're an introvert or an extrovert or anywhere in between, I think I'm noticing that there's something we all have in common right now, and that is that we are so excited for the day when the coronavirus pandemic will be over. Uh, we're looking forward to people, um, of course, people not getting sick, um, anymore. We're looking forward to a time when churches and schools can be open again. We're looking forward to a time when we can meet with friends and family face to face. We're even looking forward to a time when our sports teams will be able to play games again. Um, and authorities have given us some estimates of when they think that day is going to be, but it seems like no one knows for sure. Meanwhile, in the waiting, we're trying to do a good job of loving the people that we're close to and uh, reaching out to neighbors while still appropriately distancing ourselves. But um, even though we're not maybe settled in the uncertainty of not knowing when that day is going to happen, we're really looking forward to it and the day it does will be a great day. It hit me a lot this week about how that circumstance is really similar to how scripture describes the Lord's return. And I just love when God allows circumstances in my life that show a little bit of the truth of his word and his, um, the way that he is, the way that he works in the world. And um, I think it's, uh, it's something to look forward to so much. The day of the Lord is a day that um, he will come and he will set everything right. It's a day that he will uh, bring believers to live eternally with him. And there was a scripture this week as I was searching out that idea that just jumped out at me and I want to share with you all this afternoon. So this is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to start with verses 1 and 2. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. In uh, Mark uh, chapter 13, Jesus tells his disciples, no one knows when this day is coming. Um, as far as dates and times, we don't know, we won't know, but we can be certain that the day is coming. Continuing on to verse 4. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. Another version um, describes sober as self-controlled or the idea of being disciplined. So as followers of Jesus, as believers, we have a certainty um, even that, that the day is coming. We live in the light. We live awake to that truth. And meanwhile, it's our job to be on mission, to be loving God and loving others. Continuing on to verse 8, but since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Verse 8 really stuck out to me here, and maybe you noticed it too, that in it, Paul um, says that faith, hope, and love are like an armor that we have, that we can be confident or certain of um, God's truths. And if you've been listening or reading any of my messages the last month, you know that that's been my prayer for you, for the women of Oakwood, that faith, hope, and love would be filling you up from the Lord and that it would overflow to others. So I kind of geeked out a little bit when I read that passage this week thinking about you and thinking how I've been praying for you. So then Paul goes on in that, um, later on in the next couple of verses to talk about what our basis or source of that certainty is. And that is that Jesus Christ died for us so that we no longer are under God's wrath, but instead we have salvation through Jesus's death and resurrection. And what a perfect message to be thinking about this weekend as we're about to celebrate Easter. So um, for those of us who might be dwelling on uncertainty, 
um, I just encourage you to think about what we are certain of. And this weekend is a great example of how much the Lord has given us to be certain of. Um, that he loves us and he wants us to be with him forever. Uh, are you looking forward? So let me ask you, are you looking forward to the day of the Lord's return just as much as you're looking forward to this coronavirus um, pandemic being over and life returning somewhat to normal? Or what about this? Are you using your time in the waiting to stay on mission? May I encourage you to um, look at this passage in First Thessalonians chapter 5 and think about that over this weekend if you have time. And let me know how I can be praying for you. Um, drop me an email or a message. I would love to be praying for you more specifically. And I want to leave you with the same exhortation that Paul ended um, this section of scripture with as well. Here it is. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Be blessed, women.